2009, there was probably six or seven of us that got brought in that year that were, you know, a bit rough around the edges. I was a little bit out of my depth. Particularly, I would have, you know, had this imposter idea that I'm gonna be found out at any time. For to talk about biggest challenges, I think mine were kind of internal. You're supposed to act a particular way when you're a bloke, particularly a sportsman. It was more of a, you know, personal thing. Was I good enough to play at the top, top level? My own worst enemy chipping away at my confidence and stuff like that and nearly setting myself up to fail. It made me look inside and actually have a dig deep through the layers. I was getting in and out of games, playing well one week, playing poorly the other week. I'd be dropped, essentially, 2012 and get into the Leinster final. I just completely crashed. Playing against Mead and I had seven turnovers in the first half and Gilroy, I remember coming up to me at halftime saying, what's wrong with you? Like, I was just completely underperforming. I was hijacked. I wasn't in the right frame of mind, really. I was taken off pretty much at the end of my season that year. Just kind of doubting yourself before matches, hoping everything goes right rather than, you know, backing yourself, dreading the game and the hours before the match and not sleeping the night before. Days that went right, it was great, but days that went wrong, it was, you know, low enough or challenging enough in terms of just responding to it, you know. Because suddenly if you're winning, you're flying high, you're great, but if you're losing, then you feel brutal because you're probably linking your happiness to the roller coaster of intercounty football. I remember having a chat with our sports side, Caroline, and um, that was a big change for me because it was the first time where I was really honest and really told anyone. I was like, you know, this is actually what's going on in my head. Like, am I the only one that's like this? So how do you deal with it and stuff? And that was a delightful moment for me. 2012, I went back to college studying, studying psychology, back playing music and stuff. You know, just trying to fill up other areas of my life so that the football didn't go right or I got a bang and my career was over. At least I'd have something else. Well, I started playing on Orwell Green when I was maybe five or six, maybe. Mr. Brantney was here, who were in Mr. B's classroom right now. He was a big influence to get me playing football and hurling. It's a big part of my upbringing. It was always something that my dad was very strong on. My dad played football for Sing Street for years. I just love competing. I just love the idea of pitting yourself up against another guy or another team and trying to outsmart them. I always felt that the mindset was the things that separated the good from the great performing when the stakes are high. I love the idea of being in the cauldron and people looking to you when you know they need something done or they need a score or whatever it is, I love that. So that's something that I learned to enjoy that moment. So even if it is 20 minutes or 60 minutes or two minutes or whatever it is, just trying to get the most out of it. Why do I do this? Like, you know, it's not worth the stress, but it 100% is once you get past that and you, you walk it down, you challenge it, it's, it's all good. And the gifts you get at the end of it are beautiful. When you look back at all your great days in the blue jersey of Dublin, what for you has been the standout one? Well, for me, when I always look back, the time everything fell into place was in the final in 2011 against Kerry. Getting that goal when it looked like things were going against us was, it was a big moment for me. And I'll always look back at that as a kind of thing where no one will ever take that one from me. I love thinking back on it. That win that day was amazing. <laughs>